Okay, what I want to talk about here is the diagnosis of this 8-1 that was running rough. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't have any video of how it ran before. It was running very, very poorly. Uh, it was figured out really quick that uh, by just unplugging coils that we only had, you know, five cylinders hitting on this 8-1. So when I came back down with, with the right equipment, uh, I used what we call a relative compression test. So what this basically is, is just a very, very quick, but very accurate um, compression test, relative. So what relative means is we're checking the cylinders versus the rest of them, so relative to the others. So when you have a, a very low or even just weak compression, uh, you can actually pick it out with this test. So what we do since an 8.1, um, uh, you know, I, I just basically took my current meter uh, or excuse me, current clamp and just clamped around an easy coil. So the orange wire in this Mercruiser 81 is the coil fee, so that's the current. Well, one of the easiest coils to get to is number eight. So I just clamp around number eight and that's what this blue trace is. So every time the engine comes up uh, or that cylinder comes up on when it fires, it's gonna trigger that. Um, the other thing we do is we take a high current clamp and go around the battery cable. It doesn't matter which one, positive or negative, because whatever current leaves the battery has to come back to the battery. So uh, at any rate, uh, we just disable the injector. So I unplug the injectors and I crank the engine for probably 10 seconds. So you'll see the initial rush of current here. Okay, and then let's zoom this in to see what the heck's going on. So what we're looking for is a repeatable action. Now if you see here, there's a repeatable dip. Let's see, dip, dip, dip. That's actually a space. There should be eight even humps. You know, I've got a V8 engine. We'll blow this up more. Okay. So I know my trigger is number eight. So I know the firing order. So it would be one, eight, seven, two. Look, there's no two there, big hole. Six, five, four, three, one, eight, seven, two. Oops, get my zoom out of the way here. Okay, get this out of here. I'm using Pico Scope, by the way. It's a very good, powerful tool. So we'll start over here. So we know that's eight, seven, two is not there. Six, five, four, three, one. Eight, seven, no two, six, five, four, three. And what we're looking for is even humps. So I drop this uh, cursor down here, this dashed line. And yes, this one is a little bit higher than the rest. And that's because with no compression in number two, the crankshaft got spinning a little bit quicker. So when it comes up and hits the compression on number six, uh, it's going to have just a little bit more compression because that crankshaft freewheeled around number two. You know, so that starter kind of wound up gets the engine cranking a little bit faster. So two's our guy. So without taking a spark plug out, without disassembling anything, we already know who doesn't have compression. And based on the way the engine runs, yes, I could have used a vacuum transducer. Uh, we knew it had to be an, a leaky intake valve or a, you know, something with the spring. I was actually thinking tulip valve was gonna be the problem, but uh, once we got the valve cover off, we saw it was just a broken intake valve spring on cylinder two, so. With that valve hanging open like that, that really messes up the charge in the intake. So I just want to go over on how this was found uh, very quickly. Um, and like I say, it's a very good test. I recommend if you're a technician uh, that you practice this. You do this, you do this on good engines. You know, breaking this out on a bad engine for the first time, you'll, you'll be in left field. But you need to start doing this relative compression, number one. And the other thing you can do too um, is you can kind of check timing. See, on a coil on plug engine, uh, you know, how, how do you check ignition timing? You know, that, that's, that's, that's hard to do, you know. So, you know, one of the things you can do relatively is, you know, that, that spark line should fire just before the piston gets on TDC. Well, the highest point is right there, okay? I'll get a pointer here. The highest point, you know, or the piston, the TDC is right there. See when that spark fired? Right, just right before it. So that tells me that relatively that my crankshaft trigger wheel and all that is in pretty decent shape. You know, if you ever get an electronic engine, you're not sure what the hell's going on. You know, if this spark is in the middle of these valleys, I I'm out of time. 
you know, so we've seen harmonic balancers slip on Fords where the trigger wheel is. We've seen trigger wheels move on 3.6 GM crankshafts and equinoxes and or not equinox, but traverses and stuff. You know, this is a very a flex, broken flex blade on a 3338 minivan in the old days. This is how you would catch that, you know, so just want to give you some insight.